Hey. Hey, everybody. You're listening to The Ox and the Rat, where we put a modern take on old tales. So we're going to be looking at fables again today. Um, and got a fun one, I think. How are you doing over there, uh, Rat? Good. Just taking a gulp of coffee here. Mmm, that's good stuff. It's a little late for me in my part of the world. Um, so I'm the ox. I forgot to introduce myself as usual. Um, and my friend the rat over here. Um, so we're going to be looking at another one of Aesop's tales. This one is called The Ass and the Lion. And that is not a swear word. Um, <laughs> it is the name for a donkey. I think. Right. Uh, the original name or a name? Yes. I had a donkey growing up. Oh, do pr- pray tell. Um, her name was Ruthie. You know what? I th- I assumed it was a guy. I don't know what that says about me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, she was a bit of an ass. Oh, clever. And we're censored now. <laughs> Anything new over there? Not so new uh, I don't know I hmm <laughs> I got nothing I didn't do anything yeah, no. I went I went for like a little walk yesterday 5,000 steps oh, oh boy I bought, I bought some new shorts oh okay from right. uh, H&M they were on sale and H&M doesn't matter where you go you can always get the same stuff I love it no matter where you are in the world fast fashion yeah, man, I, I I pretty much am fully clothed in H and M for like all the time through through all of the seasons, maybe minus winter, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Kind of the same thing with a, a different company, but yeah, those uh, nine dollar shorts uh, for a bathing suit, nine mm-hmm. bucks, and uh, same for a pair of regular shorts. That's wow. what's new. Technology. Well, let's get right to it then. Um, It's called, like we said, The Lion and the Ass. All right, so here we go. One day, as the lion walked proudly down a forest aisle and the animals respectfully made way for him, an ass brayed a scornful remark as he passed. The lion felt a flash of anger, but when he turned his head and saw who had spoken, he walked quietly on. He would not honor the fool with even so much as a stroke of his claws. And I hope you're not looking at it this time. Are you? No. I had my eyes okay. closed. I was listening. All right. All right, good. What, what do you want to guess what the moral is? Okay, so I'm just going to break down the story a little bit just yeah, to make sure it. that I, I heard it correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's an ass walking. He makes some ass comment to mm-hmm. the lion. Lion mm-hmm. looks back and it's like, ah, it's only the ass. Mm-hmm. No need to deal with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's the whole story basically, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> like really the entire story. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so he's not going to deal with somebody who knows that, like he's already had interactions with this person or he's heard of, uh, not person, ass. He's heard of this <laughs> ass before. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he knows that this ass is uh, is kind of yeah you know, does this to everybody um, is not worth a response. So mm-hmm. don't get angry or reactionary to people that you know are just you know trying to goat you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I bring, like bringing up bring the last story. Yeah, a third. Yeah, the goat, right. Yeah. Don't be a goat. Now, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, so it's do not resent the remarks of a fool. Just ignore them. I like that. Um, and I guess it's all in the symbolism, right? The lion being the noble creature, the ass being, well, what everybody thinks of a donkey. Stubborn, stubborn as well. Just like yeah, those Yeah, the stubborn goats. idiot. Just like those goats. That's right. So 
in addition to not being a goat, don't be an ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess it's a quick quick summary of the last two podcasts. But um, yeah, so there's a lot there um, in just a few paragraphs, which is one of the reasons I really like these, these fables. And um, this one's literally, I'm looking at it, it's three sentences or four sentences in two paragraphs. So um, do not resent the remarks of a fool, ignore them. What a great set of recommendations for today. Um, I'm trying to think if it really applies to my own life. Um, I've definitely let people goad me into getting upset before, but I think, I don't know if I can draw anything off the top of my head. Maybe you can. Um, I can definitely relate it to, to, to modern, to the modern world. Now, is it goad or goat? You. Uh, goad. That's mm. what I was go. What I was saying there to goad me into yeah. some kind of. I said I tried to use that word too, but I said goat. Ah, okay. I thought you were being clever. Turns yeah. out it was a mistake. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll admit that. Okay. <laughs> so what what was your question? Did you have one? So like like well, do you have anything that you can relate it to in your in your personal life? As I'm thinking about my own, I'm like, eh, maybe I've I've usually been the ass. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I have a, definitely not the lion. Yeah, I have a question. Because um, mm. ass is fool, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, in maybe we won't have so many interactions with fools. I mean, you you definitely can over the course of mm. your life. Um, but can a regular person that maybe you know already can they be the fool? Or the ass. Oh, you mean? And what, do you mean like a friend, or an acquaintance? Or? Yeah, um, maybe like maybe they're ignorant or not educated on a specific subject, so uh-huh. therefore they're not. We're not calling them a negative name, but they're just they just don't know. So you got to ignore what they say rather than argue. Oh God, yeah. Well, let's we could di- we can dig into the cognitive the behavioral psychology behind that like you know how all the studies today uh, and a lot of talk about like this this uh, white black situation we have where people are, are arguing back and forth about like well take the united states and it's like well you're either a republican or a democrat right it's ridiculous like it doesn't matter what either one what it doesn't even matter what what you show up on on like a political test it's like no well I'm I'm still red or I'm blue, like this tribal culture that we have going on, um, impervious to facts. So I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of that going on, and a lot of science coming out is talking about like how it's actually counterproductive to argue with people. Mm-hmm. So if they if they have a foolish remark and they're and they're already coming at you with something that's not scientific, giving facts objective facts is not going to work Mm. (laughs) it just doesn't work and it actually hardens their stance because they become like oh i'm being i'm being attacked Mm -hmm. right they somehow have an ownership in this thing that's outside of them it's really strange oh we've all been there before you know i've been there sort of with the diet thing i'm pretty pretty strict about it and I, i went on all the way towards carnivore at some point and now i'm kind of like bringing it back a little bit but that's more so experimental. But yeah, I think like peop you know, if somebody says something foolish sometimes it's best to it's best to just, you know, like let it pass. Mm. For sure, because you ain't changing their opinion. Bringing up the states, it's interesting that this logic is also being applied to knowledgeable people, mm. not asses. Oh, yeah. It's like uh they'll listen to it and then say, "Uh, oh, he's said that before." Um, and that that may or may not have uh, turned out wrong, so therefore I don't need to listen to anything he says in the future. Yeah, that's right. I'm, you I'm make, you talking w- about you- sorry. I'm talking about the like the mask debate, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. You make one mistake, right? Cancel culture. You make one mistake, you're you're all, you're you're screwed forever, right? Ask for you know, life. You're black. Yeah, ask for life. There you go. Love it. Yeah. Um. I, th- I guess part of the problem here it, for me with this with this tale is in the the symbolism of the of the the lion and the ass because it kind of it paints a pretty black and white picture, right? Mm. The lion is clearly 
like the better person and the ass is you know the idiot although i guess it, it works on that level that it's trying to get a message across but you know i think it, it kind of it kind of like makes it seem like you know you could be the you'd probably want to see yourself as a lion and like you know these all these asses around but that that get switched pretty quickly, right? I mean, we've all been either, probably. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of says that the the ass can never have a good point. Hell yeah. Like, may right. maybe the ass is like, uh, watch out for that rock. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Stupid lion. And then he's like, whatever, idiot. And then he just falls in, down a ravine. Well, you know, Mustafa fell down that ravine in The Lion King. Did he? Well, oh, he was thrown. My bad. Oh, yeah. I, um, I was trying to find like a, like a good example. Yeah. The young one fell down. But Simba? Simba. Well. That was under pressure, if, though. If memory serves, yeah. He was, he was out there for a good reason. He was tricked. So that's a bit different. Well, he got knocked off by the... I, I think. Yeah, knocked off the... Ridge by a hyena. Did he? I yeah. don't know, man. That's how he got hyena. way out into the... Uh, those... Did the brambles? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that was before then, man. That was before Mustafa was still alive then. Anyways, we're getting way off track. Uh, <laughs> Just talking yeah, about lions. The Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> Just talking about lions. There's a lot of movies about <laughs> like, <laughs> the Donkey King or something like that. <laughs> well, there's uh, oh. Shrek. Oh, yeah. Well... Yeah, and he is he the is, fool in that. Yep. Um, Ghost in the Darkness. There's another good lion movie. What's that? You have to look it up. Um, so, applying it to my own life, you said earlier. Yeah. Um, this one's hard because you have to think about a specific fool mm. or someone you think is foolish. Well, you could have been either in, in whatever case, the lion in the ass. Um, That's I, I'll go first if you want, unless you, you've got something in mind. No, you can go. All right. Well, <laughs> let's talk about older people. <laughs> Man, uh, times, they are changing. And uh, some of these perspectives, I mean, they. I hope, I hope that when I grow older, that I am not sounding like the donkey, uh, eyeing about like you know this or that problem, how everything's wrong with the world, how this generation and that generation, oh, things back in my day, like, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so tired of that. Like, it just, it's not correct. It doesn't match any of the facts, but you know. When it comes to, you know, loved ones, for example, when they say something foolish, sometimes you got to weigh the cost benefits of getting in of getting into any kind of remark, uh, you know, said by anybody else. I guess this isn't a rem remark against me, per se, but when people act the ass around around me and they are close to you, I mean, that brings up a big, a big, uh, a big question, like, should ignore, but again, I you remember it was like that the goat thing. Like you can't just let everything. You can't yield all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, do not resent the the remarks of a fool. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I disagree. Right, can't yield all the time. Yeah, because maybe you want it. If this guy is a, or girl is a fool, hmm. why not try to educate the fool a little bit? But then we come back to cognitive psycho uh, behavioral psychology and like we know it doesn't work. So here's something that I think might work. And it, it came it's come up in, in discussions around, you know, how do we educate people about, you know, what's right, what's wrong with the whole Black Lives Matter and everything that's that's going on. Uh, how do you educate people about about how they should be, you know, talking, for example, in the workplace? Um, and, and for me, it's come up like. I think it's been really interesting hearing people try to figure out like, you know, it's like, okay, this is all great. I understand what you're saying, but how do I educate others? You know, how do I have that talk? Because I don't, we, we can't ignore it anymore. 
Like there are some blatant, awful things that are happening. How do you educate somebody? So how do you have that discussion without re uh, triggering that, 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 that uh, reaction, that tribal reaction? My thing, I think, is asking the question, why? You know, like rather than challenging immediately, a why isn't a challenge, right? So if somebody says something, you know, about a certain culture, let's say, you could say, well, maybe not that's interesting, but kind of approach it that way that, you know, this is a person who has feelings for a reason mm -hmm. rather than I need to educate you. Maybe I need to get educated about why you're going there or why you think that. I think that's that's empathy, right? And it's a really important thing that we struggle we struggle with, you know, having understanding somebody else's perspective requires that you that you listen. You know what I mean? And yep. maybe that's the problem that we're not listening and asking the question why to me without any anything else attached is could be incredibly powerful. Yeah. I think there's a lot of times in conversations that we just go back and forth and we mm. never really dig into anything. Yeah. It's like, "Oh, it's so messed up last night I was doing this or that and then you'd be, the other person could say oh that sucks it's not like oh why you know why were you feeling that way nobody really digs in it just kind of goes on to the next conversation point a lot of the time yeah yeah and that kind of goes yeah we, we need to be more interested in other people I think mm -hmm. people are people are crazy fascinating like <laughs> even people I, I you know oh, honestly I, I don't really I haven't liked in the past like you could you could go th you could like dig through that person's past and find a million fascinating events stories illuminating facts about them mm -hmm. you know that that would make you that would help you at the very least to understand how they are who who they are today but we never want to and that's the whole like oh I'm too busy mm -hmm. I don't know I feel that way but I'm not yeah it's a skill like a conversational skill to be able to pull out details i know somebody that i worked with before was pretty good at that and it, and it when they would always keep kind of asking you like oh why or uh, i don't know inquiring into your situation or your life it it definitely makes you feel like hmm, well this person's listening they're interested they're trying to see my perspective i don't know um i think we're getting off topic a little bit yeah so Let's see. So your uh, situation was what that? Well, what was was you know how do you deal uh, like like do should you like those goats? Should you be yielding to somebody else to let them pass, or you know in this uh, relating to ignore them, or you know to what extent do you take that like meh mentality like the lion here? Do not resent the remarks of a fool. Just ignore them. Walk walk on. Like, where do you draw the line? Yeah. If the person's so foolish that they cannot be educated at all, then I think you just got to cut your losses and, I don't know, give up. Especially, yeah, I don't know. I think you have to define who the fool is. Are they the straight-up fool or are they a loved one that's misinformed or have some kind of strange ideas about a certain topic or about you like they make a comment about you like oh you're so lazy what are you doing meanwhile you're like sitting at the computer but you're training to be a professional gamer they don't know hmm. yeah yeah i think i think the me comments have so somehow become the easiest ones for me to to not bother with um i think it's more like the like the mis the misinformed stuff, the misinformed fool that bothers me, because I find their comments can be can be I I feel like I have I have a role to play in like educating them, right? <laughs> I don't know, like it's, it's it's probably a very selfish feeling, so I'm t I tend to react to those, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm trying to say that there's a right way to do it. Um, I don't res well maybe I do resent it. You know, maybe I am more tribal than I think. I don't know. Uh that's tough. Do not remark. You know, I they they say the lion felt a flash of anger. 
Mm-hmm. I get that a lot. Mm-hmm. I get that a lot when I was like, mm. but I've be- maybe I've just become really good at at like sort of sort of like suffering the wound, and then I'm just like, this too, this too shall pass, kind of stuff, and like le- and like letting it pass, or maybe asking a question, or like I said, why kind of thing, and then getting my piece in, but I'm not being the lion. Then I'm, you know, I'm reacting. Yeah. So, that flash of anger is where you're building up your whole defense. You're like, yeah. all right, now I'm going to educate you. <laughs> yeah, it's not the right reaction. I don't know. But but here it's like the lion felt it, but reacted the, cor- the correct way. So it's not like you can't be human and have that reaction. It's probably the mindfulness, and there's that term that's getting thrown around a lot, the mindfulness, the awareness of, of noticing like, Oh, that's a trigger for me, but I'm gonna leave it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's hard. That's really hard for me. I I don't know what that says about me. Like, yeah, I feel like that's hard for a lot of people. Seems like people uh, look for ass comments and then relish in the fact that they can react in mm-hmm. anger. You know, that seems like that's all the internet does. You go yeah. look at an <laughs> article and you're like. Negative comment, negative comment, negative comment. You could go and start arguing with all these people and try to re-educate them, but good luck on that. Yeah, and as I've stated, like the it doesn't work, you know, <laughs> especially on the <laughs> internet just... with comments. It's like, oh yeah, impossible. Yeah, all the all the virtue signaling that goes on. I mean, God, it's like, you know, people, people like you know what the craziest. Yeah, I won't even go. I won't even get into that. No, no, no. I'm not going to get no. into that. I'm sure that they'll come up some other time. But I mean, like that is not real life. What happens on the internet? No, it's the opposite of it. And of course, you know, people will say things and do things on there that they wouldn't otherwise. So that that's a totally different arena to address in this in this fable here. Like, don't resent the marks of a fool. Well, you know. Maybe they feel it, but they don't have the courage to say anything in person, but the internet makes that possible. Mm-hmm. Then, and uh, yeah. if you attached a face to that, most likely mm. they're not going to be saying it. Nope. Anonymity is a terrible thing sometimes, although we do need it. Right, yeah. That was so just going to maybe- be my little sage advice for us in the future mm-hmm. if we upload these to YouTube. Mm-hmm. That we have to ignore the ass comments. Oh it, yeah, That's there's no there could be some constructive criticism or things like that, which would be good. It's still hard to take, but at least it's constructive. No, I like I like alternating sewer sewer cleaning roles, <laughs> where, where you've got to it's it's your week or it's yeah it's your week to parse the co- the comments and find the nuggets of gold <laughs> mm-hmm. and. And like, yeah, cl- take a take a long shower afterwards or something, and yeah. or cry or something. <laughs> Some I don't know. Build thick skin. Yeah, build thick skin. So, what do you think about about this now? The uh, thumbs up or thumbs down? Do not resent the remarks of a fool. Ignore them. Uh, this is a tough one. Do not resent the remarks of a fool. Ignore them. Hmm. I am given this. Oh, a. We we agreed there was no thumb sideways, right? Like, oh, come. <laughs> I think that's what maybe what it comes down to is like the fact that w- what they're trying to get at here is that if it's if it's a donkey, it's stubborn, right? It's a being a fool, and stubborn people who are fools are not going to change. And like we talked about, maybe there's a way to go about that, but for the most part, it's probably best to just ignore it and stop what you called like that cycle. Because so it's got to stop somewhere, doesn't it? And if that means just taking one on the chin, meh. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this one one a thumbs up on on the literal uh, on the literal end of it because, like you said, yeah, we've. I mean, you could. I like I like the arguments about not about like yielding and bringing it back to the goat to the goats there, but you know, like what they're getting at is like a fool is always a fool, and what do you gain from from confronting them? Although the lion would get some food, and that's one of the strangest parts about the story. But yeah, <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I would say a thumbs up on that if we can look at it in two perspectives. Probably a thumbs down on the other perspective, mm -hmm. I guess, but I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Yeah, sure you are. So thumbs up, do not uh, ignore true fools. Yes. Walk away, stop the cycle, confront, thumbs down, do not ignore the comments that have uh foolish that remarks do not re yeah yeah don't don't ignore foolish remarks but do ignore fools oh i like it that's mm. another shirt <laughs> yeah and i'm sure some people will, will definitely disagree with that one um because you Good can find you. a lot of a lot of cases where maybe you should be confronting this fool that says foolish things all the time if enough people confronted them then uh, perhaps over time, they may change, but who knows? The donkey's always the donkey's always stubborn, but somebody may not know if they're acting like a donkey. Mm. Ha, ha! There you go. So I like that. You can come down on it. I'm gonna say thumbs up. You know, a ignore ignore the fool, but do not ignore foolish remarks. Mm -hmm. hmm. That sounds good to me. I like it. All right. That's a, that's a good one. So we come around. We're a little cyclical there, but we came around at the end, and we've got, we've got what, what appears as a, uh, what at least appears to be a, a conclusion on this. All yes. right. Well, that's, that was a fun one, and uh, hope, we hear, hope you all join us for our next one. Uh, we don't have a decision on that, do we? But uh, it'll be fun. We do not. And that should be coming out next week. I don't know if we've picked a specific date on when these things will come out. No, we're still working on it. Um, I was thinking I'm, perhaps Thursday. Thursdays. Thursdays are nice days. Yeah, I like it. Let's uh, let's stick with that. All right, and uh, let's let's do let's do maybe a classic one that people. I got I got I got my eye on on a, a classic fable that we all know for next time. So see if you can guess it, everybody. And uh, till next time. All right. Adios. Later.